Good morning, guys. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the EMG, which is electromyography. That is the measurement of electrical activity of the muscles. Uh, in this section, we're going to talk about the gross and microscopic structure of the muscles then how muscle is controlled by motor neuron and the group of muscle fibers and motor neuron is called the motor unit and then we will talk about some uh, aspects of uh, reading and recording the uh, myogram or myography okay so here in the diagram you can see this is a uh, muscle fiber here one muscle cell this hole here is the group of muscle cells and you can see one muscle cells the muscle cell is surrounded by its plasma membrane and on the plasma membranes of muscle cells you can see there is axon branches which is making synapse which is called neuromuscular junction inside the muscle cells you see group of bundle of myofilaments which is the major organelle inside the muscle okay so in order to contract this muscle or to slide actin in myosin to slide actin in myosin you need a motor neuron depolarize and bringing action potential to the neuromuscular junction which ultimately depolarize the muscle cells and in result muscle cell will contract okay so at the end motor neuron will release neurotransmitter acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft at each of all its neuromuscular junction and that depolarize the muscle cell okay so once the acetylcholine release that triggers an accent potential in the muscle fiber okay which in turn promotes the release of calcium ions intracellularly from the sarcoplasmic reticulum so if you see this is the diagram of the muscle fiber inside we have myofibrils and inside the myofibrils if you see there is myosin and actin and this is the diagram of one sarcomere and at the same time each myofibril is surrounded by a t-tubule and then on the side of t-tubule there is cisternae which is stores the calcium so cisternae are sarcoplasmic reticulum a kind of smooth endoplasmic reticulum in skeletal muscle which stores calcium as you know muscle needs the action potential from motor neuron ATP and calcium to contract okay so once action potential comes they release neurotransmitter acetylcholine at the neural junction and then it depolarizes the plasma membrane and then you see this plasma membrane invaginate and goes in and around the myofibrils which is taking impulse inside the cell this plasma membrane or T tubules are linked to the sarcoplasmic reticulum and that opens the sarcoplasmic reticulum door to release and flood the calcium inside the myofibrils okay so the release calcium together with ATP triggers protein interaction that promote produce shortening of sarcomeres as microfilament slide along each other okay so this calcium ATP helps sliding of 
actin in myosin and we will talk about this in the lectures when sarcomere which is the unit between two adjacent G disc shorten fiber shorten and that contract the whole muscle okay so let's see how motor neuron helps in contraction of skeletal muscles so it is motor unit which plays a role in muscle contraction motor unit is a motor neuron and all the muscle fiber innervated by that particular motor neuron okay so let's see if i have to contract my biceps muscle and biceps muscle is controlled by several motor unit so let's see if i have the lighter weight to lift then i will recruit a less number of motor unit if i have to lift 20 pounds then i will recruit more motor units that means in the lighter weight you're gonna use less number of motor units and a smaller motor units compared to heavier weight you're going to use larger number of motor units and larger ratio of motor units okay so let's see here the more motor neurons are sending action potential to a muscle the more motor units becomes activated so from brain uh, when you like only one motor neurons are activated only some fibers are contracting and you can see there is very small voltage increment with a tiny miny and muscle tension then it screws increases as the motor recruitment increases then muscle tension you can see it increase and once most of the muscle uh, the motor units are recruited there is maximum contraction of the muscles and if you continue this then it will continues for time being till there is enough calcium and ATP after the depletion of ATP there will be fatigue okay so the result is a complex pattern of electrical potential that can be recorded as an electro myogram or EMG the relative timing and amplitude of these patterns recorded over particular muscles reflect closely the aggregate activity of motor neurons that innervate each muscles okay so like if you use only few motor units that means the muscle will be only freckling the weaker strength weaker tension okay this is a muscle fatigue, as I told earlier. So, let's see here. A fully contracting muscle is like a car at a high speed. The depressed gas pedal, like the electric stimulation, forces the engine to run strong. But if the car runs out of gasoline, like muscle fibers, running out of ATP and calcium, it cannot maintain speed and will deaccelerate. De so let's see when at the beginning what happens there is lag of time like you start a stimulus here but it is not fully contracted but once all the motor required motor units are recruited then you have maximum strength force of contraction but as all the motor unit in that particular muscle is activated they will have maximum amplitude of contraction or a strength of contraction but as you goes what happens the motor unit will not be working all of them because you will be lacking the ATP in the muscle you will be lacking the calcium and the muscle will build up lactic acid which will cause lactic acidosis and these thing will make your muscle fatigue so slowly you see the muscle force and tension is going down 
and this is called muscle fatigue okay stimulating a muscle with action potential is not enough to keep it contract continuously so you are you need atp and calcium in enough amount to continue contraction of the muscles here is electromyogram typical electromyogram and here is contraction strength so an electromyogram is recording of skin surface voltage that is produced by underlying skeletal muscle contraction note how contraction strength correspond to electric activity this activity is the sum of all active motor units so here you have what do you do how you measure the myogram you put the electrode on the skin over the skeletal muscle and then you contract the muscle and you take the graph so here electrical activity you see this is the emg electrical activity on the skin which is measured the electrical electrical activity in the muscle and you see the weaker contraction strength you see stronger electrical activity more frequency and more amplitude stronger further increase in electrical activity stronger contraction strength the maximum electrical activity maximum strength contraction so it's stronger the electrical activity stronger the contraction strength okay so uh, the purpose of EMG why we measure the EMG electromyogram uh, we demonstrate in your lab the virtual lab recruitment of motor units how you increase the number of motor units to increase the force of contraction and then when you get the uh, muscle fatigue like when you deplete the ATP and calcium inside the muscle cell it is also used to detect uh, several kind of disease in the muscle like myopathies myopathies are uh, destruction of muscle cells maybe autoimmune or inflammatory or other cause neuropathies if you have uh, the abnormal condition of your neuron like motor neuron disease motor neuron degeneration type 2 diabetes or you have neuromuscular junction disease like you have masthenia gravis a disease where there is problem with the destruction of uh, the receptors okay so in these cases emg can be used to teach about skeletal muscle function like recruitment and fatigue that's why emg are used clinically to find disease in skeletal muscle motor neurons and nerve muscle con connections so basically emg is used to see the force of contraction to detect the function of the motor neuron the muscles and any other pathological condition of the muscles uh, shape of action potential so there is contraction uh, the, the excitation contraction coupling that means first there is electrical impulse in the muscles and then there is sliding filament theory or sliding of the filament of the actin and myosin that is contraction so contraction always follows action potential okay so you can see here there is a resting membrane potential of the skeletal muscle and when the motor neuron depolarize that brings action potential to the sarcolemma and then sarcolemma opens sodium channel and they see that gives the depolarization and then sodium chloride closes and then you have potassium channel opening which is the repolarization and then hyperpolarization and again resting so you see the time is around one to two millisecond 
for action potential okay so note uh, there are three factors that determine the shape of a typical action potential first when voltage gated sodium gets open there is a rush of sodium in the cells and that's why you have depolarization and that's why there is part labeled a okay and then you have part b which is this word this one here which is closure of the sodium channel and opening of the potassium channel okay so voltage gated potassium channel open and potassium exits the cell making the membrane negative again and that part is b here and this gives whole action potential so you can see this is the c finally the voltage gated channels are closed and then the sodium potassium pumps restore the original sodium and potassium uh, contract uh, concentration this is basically like neuron we did in the neuron okay and by re-establishing uh, re resting condition of the cell returns to the resting membrane potential. That is the part C. Here is motor unit action potential. So you can see. Uh, the motor unit action potential here result shown on your device is based on combination of all impulses from muscle fiber hit by the receptive part of the needle so here you see there are several action potential from the motor neuron coming and then in the join and combine together and becomes one so when a motor unit fires after the motor neuron action potential is transmitted across the neuromuscular junction an action potential is elicited in all of the innervated muscle fiber of that particular unit okay and the sum of all these electrical activity is known as motor unit action potential map muap okay so there are like several action potential but they combine together and forms the muap Okay. The number of muscle fiber per motor unit, the metabolic type of muscle fibers, and other factors like their proximity to the recording device affect the shape of the motor unit potential. So this is motor neuron action potential. You can see here. Several action potential is coming from the motor neuron, and they combine and become one action potential. So when uh, electrical activity and contraction So here is the stimulus voltage in the motor neuron. Uh, there is like not, if there is like very few fibers is uh, getting the stimulus. So it's small, it's small. And then once it reaches the threshold and increase the uh, motor unit recruitment, then what happens? There is the strength is in voltage is increasing. And that's how tension increase as the stimuli to nerve increases. And that is maximum contraction. Uh, this is the lab you're going to do in your lab. So here you can see these are the the blue signal displays a grip strength while the green signal shows the motor unit action potential so this is you are holding the 
device for the contraction. And uh, this is the grip strength here. And this is the electrical activity measurement on your skin, which is EMG. So you can see the motor unit action potential here. This is same side, so this is one, and this larger size are the increase frequency. In this lab, you will perform the measurement, applied force, number of active motor unit, and the frequency of individual motor unit. So these two are from the same unit because their amplitude are the same. And this big one, the larger ones are from the same motor unit, another motor unit. To make the force measurement, use this amplitude button to measure between and baseline and the blue signal in this case. This is all you're going to do in the lab. So you see, you're going to measure force measurement and frequency of measurement. How you find the frequency? Frequency is uh, you divide 1 by the period, which is 0 0.125, and that gives you the hertz. So you see different motor units produce action potential with different shapes and amplitude. Like this is second motor unit, as I said earlier, and this is first motor unit. So you can, during the EMG, when you're recording the EMG, you can see the amplitude of the uh, EMG and the similar amplitude will be coming from the same motor unit. So you have to convert the millisecond to second in order to obtain a frequency in hertz. Okay, so motor unit and grip strength. If you see here motor unit, as I said earlier, motor unit is a motor neuron and the number of muscle fiber it innervates. And we have two motor unit here, motor unit one, motor unit two, see? So blue is motor unit one and red is motor unit two. So the question is which motor unit will activate most more muscle cells, blue or red? or they will activate the same number of motor units. They will activate the same number in this diagram. Again, this is the grip strength and motor unit recruitment. So when you give the threshold, sub-threshold stimulus, the stimulus is not enough. It is not reaching beyond the baseline. Then what happens? You have no action potential. Then if you it reaches the threshold stimulus, some of the motor unit is activated, but that is not giving enough strength. So you have weaker strength, tension in the muscle. Then you increase the strength. And as you increase their strength, then whole, once the all motor units are recruited, that is maximal stimulus, all motor units are responding, then you have high magnitude. This is called motor unit recruitment for the stronger grip strength. Again, the motor units, we have talked about it. There is motor neurons and the muscle fibers.
same thing here so this is a stimuli to nerve this is proportion of nerve fibers excited and the response of muscle so this is the electrical activity and here is physical activity which you can measure in the tension of muscle okay so what happens once you increase the motor unit you see proportion of nerve fibers excited increases and so does the tension this is again muscle fatigue we talked about it earlier uh, this is a rate of fatigue in different muscle fibers slow oxidative fibers and fast oxi oxidative glycolytic glycolytic fibers so muscle fibers are like slow oxidative fibers fast oxidative uh, oxidative glycolytic fibers and fast glycolytic fibers so which one is getting fatigue fast like if you are taking atp by breaking fat or if you are doing oxidation in the mitochondria then it takes long time to get fatigue so if you want to uh, increase your stamina you need to use these muscles the fast oxidative glycolytic fibers means both way this goes glycolysis and oxidation they are like medium and if you are using only energy from glycolysis like you start running immediately then what happens you are using glycolysis and you get fatigue very fast okay uh, these are the motor units, slow oxidative fibers, motor unit 2, fast oxidative glycolytic fibers, motor unit 3, fast glycolytic fibers. And they are showing how they get fatigue. Okay. So this is all in the EMG electromyogram and go over these PDF and then do your lab. Thank you.